Hi guys, welcome back to the EC Physio YouTube channel. This week's video is a case study where a patient presented with right-sided patella or kneecap pain while cycling and hiking. When we were going through the physiotherapy assessment, there was one thing that stood out about his right lower limb that would affect his knee. Study this picture further and see if you can spot it. A bit of preamble first. We have to understand a bit of lower limb biomechanics. The knee is essentially a hinge joint, meaning it can only bend and straighten. The knee sits between the hip and ankle joints. The hip is a ball and socket joint and the ankle can effectively be thought of as a ball and socket. Ball and socket joints have a lot more freedom of movement compared to a hinge joint. So if the knee isn't being controlled properly from the hip or the ankle, that's when the knee issues start to arise. In other words, if the knee is being forced into a movement pattern outside of just bending and straightening, pain will likely be one way the knee will let you know about it. It becomes important to focus above or below the knee joint to figure out what's causing the knee pain. So back to the assessment, because he's experiencing pain to his right knee, it will inhibit his right quadriceps, meaning he won't be able to activate it as well. In turn, he's using his left quad more and we can spot a difference in his quad's muscle bulk. Have a look and compare his left and right muscle. Having a smaller quadriceps muscle will have less ability to stabilize the knee joint. Have a look at his right kneecap compared to his left. What do we see? Despite both feet pointing forwards, we can see his right patella or kneecap is pointed medially or inwards. This is a congenital condition, something he's born with. It's called tibial torsion. When he points his foot outwards, only then does his kneecap point forwards. Other things of significance in the assessment were stiff ankles from the knee to wall test. He's unable to bring his right foot away from the wall. Watch my video on the Nita wall test for a more in-depth explanation. During his single leg tests, we can tell his right hip is also weaker. Watch my video on single leg tests for a more in-depth explanation on that. So the tibial torsion coupled with the stiff ankles and weak lateral hip are contributing to his knee pain while hiking. Compare hiking with walking downstairs. When we take a step down, our knee needs to travel forwards. But if the ankle is stiff and restricting the ability for the knee to move forwards, the knee will travel into valgus or inwards to go around the ankle stiffness. Remember, the knee is meant to act as a hinge joint. Now imagine hiking downhill and repeating that inwards motion hundreds of times. Your knee will surely start to get angry. Now let's take a look at some of the footage of him on the bike. His right knee tracks inwards as he pushes down on the pedals. It's so important to have a proper biomechanical assessment before a bike fit, since it provides so much more context with what we're seeing with him on the bike. We know of his condition of tibial torsion and how his knees track in relation to his feet. So the changes made to the fit were adjustments to the cleat rotation, and we added some wedges to cant his foot laterally to help avoid his knee tracking inwards as much at the bottom of the pedal stroke. And finally, here's a comparison of his before and after. His knee is acting much more like a hinge joint in one plane of motion, which is, will surely improve his tolerance on the bike. Another change made to his bike fit was a longer stem. He looked a bit cramped on his bike as judged by his closed shoulder and elbow angles. Now here's a comparison with the before and after. With the longer reach, he looks to be a bit more comfortable and has a stronger shoulder and elbow postures. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.